Hi, it's Chester at Blue Pecan Computer Training. And in this video, we're going to look up the last matching value within a table. And I'm going to show you how to do this in Excel 365 and versions of Excel prior to Excel 365. But before I get into the examples that are going to show you how to do that, I need to explain how an approximate match lookup works. Now, in my scenario here, I've got a bonus table and I've got the sales targets in ascending order. So to use approximate match with VLOOKUP, you have to have the values that you're cross-referencing with in ascending order. Now, the way this works is that if the salesperson gets a sales value or has achieved a sales value between 0 and 9,999, they don't get any bonus. So this first range is 0 to 9,999. 1999. Now the second range would be 10,000 to 14,999. So the range is always the first value to one less than the next value. Now you don't have to write these ranges out in Excel. Excel works that all out for you. Okay, so let's try our VLOOKUP. What I would do is I would look up this value in this table array. And I'm looking to return values from the second column, the bonus column, and I'm gonna do an approximate match. Now, here in the last argument, range lookup, you get the option to choose approximate match or exact match. True for approximate, false for exact. But in actual fact, VLOOKUP performs an approximate match by default. So if I don't use that argument, it will perform an approximate match. I copy this down, you'll see that it works. And what it does in actual fact is return either an exact match. So for example, if this was exactly 25,000, it would return 300 there, or it returns the next smaller item. 21,309, can't find an exact match. So it returns the next smaller item, which is 20,000, which gives you a bonus of 250. That's how the approximate match works. Now, obviously none of this solves the main problem that we're looking at here, which is returning the last matching item. Here, what we want to do is find Bob's last sales value. And in this list, the names are in ascending order. So the values that we're cross-referencing with are in ascending order. This is essential if you're using VLOOKUP in this way. What I'm gonna do is say VLOOKUP, look up Bob, comma, in this table array, returning values from column two. Now, if you did an exact match, you know that it's gonna return the first matching values. Bob appears first there with 254, but if we use an approximate match, it returns the last matching value. Approximate match is fine in a situation where you want to return the last matching value and the values are in ascending order. Now, what if the values aren't in ascending order? So in this example, we've got the dates listed in ascending order, but the salesperson's names not in ascending order. And to do this, we can use the lookup function. But before we do that, I'm gonna kind of take it step by step so you can see what's happening. What we're gonna do is we're gonna run a test that says, does the name Bob equal any of the names in column P, the column we're cross-referencing with. Now, if I press enter, in Excel 365, you can see it spills its results into surrounding cells. But if you haven't got Excel 365, what you can do is select your formula and press F9 and see those results in a single cell. The position of the trues correspond to the position of Bob in this list. Now, we're gonna to undo that. Now, what I want to do is I want to convert the trues to a one and the falses to an error. And a way of doing that would be to divide one by these results. A true is equivalent to one and false is equivalent to zero. If you divide one by zero, you'll get an error. So you divide by and then put these results in brackets. If I press enter, you can see I get the div error if it's divided by zero. Again, if you're not in Excel 365, you can just select your formula and press F9 to see those results. What I'm going to do is use lookup. And the first argument is lookup value. 
Now the lookup value that I'm going to input is two. Now, the reason I'm looking up two in these results is I want to return the position of the last occurrence of Bob, which is the last one that appears in this list. So remember that what an approximate match does, it either returns an exact match or the next smallest item. So if I'm looking for two, the next smallest item once it's gone through all of this list is this one here, which corresponds to the last occurrence of Bob in this list. I must undo the F9 effect. This is effectively my lookup vector and my result vector is this column here. Now if I close the bracket there, press enter, you can see it returns the last matching value, even though these are not in ascending order. Okay, so if you've got XL365, you can do this quite differently. You can in fact do an exact match. Let's try this here with the values in ascending order. So I'm looking up Bob in this list, my lookup array, my return array is here. If not found, we won't specify a value for in this example. Match mode, we want to do exact match, so we can just skip that, that's the default. But in this last argument, search mode, you have the option to either search first to last or last to first. And it's last to first that will return the last matching value. So I double click on that and it returns minus one in the formula, close the bracket, press enter. Now the good thing about this is it also works if the values you're cross-referencing with aren't in any particular order. If I use X look up here, I can look up this value, in this lookup array, this return array, skipping if not found and match mode, search mode, search last to first, and it gives me the correct answer. So if you have Excel 365, it's much easier. XLOOKUP is a lot more versatile in the way you can search, but if not, you still have the tools to do the job. Okay, thanks very much for listening. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please subscribe, and I'll see you next video.